Hopefully it's not too warped in some of these areas here, but uh, I'm gonna try to see what I can do. Look good, huh? Yeah. Not me, this. Oh, yeah, that too. If you're carrying stuff through here, you don't wanna bump into the lights. Right. As you saw earlier, Nate salvaged and was restoring our hardwood floors from our renovations. All this is wood that I tore out of the house. The, all the flooring, original flooring right here. Wow. There's some more in there, not, not a whole lot. But he also took down the original wood from the ceilings in the laundry room, which was an addition to the house. I got the walls off. I'm gonna go through and get all the insulation out and everything too shortly, but uh, first I'm gonna take the ceiling out. I went through and labeled every board because I want to try to reuse this if possible. I don't know how well it'll come out, but you know, old wood's pretty cool. And we saved that as well because we could tell that was older wood, but it may not have been from the 1930s. I'm not really sure. And that's going to be in the laundry room right here. So any of this wood, that, like all that over there that has a bluish grayish tint and this here, that's all going to go back on the ceiling. So this was on the ceiling? Already? Original. Yep, this was on there. I tore it all out. Oh. He also salvaged that and then he was going back through the laundry room after he had restored it, cleaned it up so that we could reuse it and put it back on the laundry room ceiling. I'm in the laundry room now, getting ready to do the taping. I filled this crack in. My dad explained to me to put a piece of drywall in here, a little thin strip. And uh, because the gap is so large, because not every corner is even in these old houses. So sometimes you're gonna have bigger gaps when you do the drywall. And then I covered it up with some Durabond. And that's what that is, this Durabond. It's like a hard drywall mud. You don't use that for taping. Just fill in the big gaps with it. I put some sheets up to keep some of the dust down and for a beautiful aesthetic appeal. Good little surfboards, huh? Time to get to work. What's up, y'all? I got the tape done in here yesterday in this one room. This is the laundry room. Um, so today I'm gonna do the first coat. It's gonna be nice. Can't wait. So what we have here is, uh, this is what we have. This is a great lighting. This room has really nice lighting. I love it. We laid everything out here. Looks like we're missing a little piece right there somehow, but that's not a big deal because I realized that you see where it turns white down there. It used to go into the back area where they had um, water heater and stuff. So since we don't have that area now, that's actually a, the bathroom. I can cut all this. Therefore, some of these spots, I have a lot of extra wood I can use, so should work out. Hopefully it's not too warped in some of these areas here, but uh, I'm gonna try to see what I can do. So I got my first row on, which was the hardest because I wanted to get that one lined up so that everything was even to the center. So once I got that one, hopefully the rest will go pretty smoothly. This one, uh, second one I just put up and I'm gonna keep going. I just cut out this HVAC duct with my multi-tool and then I filled in this hole. What I did was I used one of these cutouts with a hole saw. I think it's four inches. I put a little piece of wood behind it in the hole and I screwed it to the sides and then I put this right over the hole. Screwed it in and first I put mud around it and then I covered it with mud. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the new board going down here and I'm gonna move the light fixtures inward a little bit on both sides to make them even. And they're gonna be right in the center of this next board I'm putting in. So I think it'll look better lined up central to the window and to the uh, door behind me going into the bathroom.
Ah, uh, never mind. I gotta, I gotta make this better. Look good, huh? Yeah. Not me, this. Oh, yeah, that too. Um. <laughs> Well, I got one more row, and then uh, and then the ceiling's done. So this ceiling was uh, original with the house. So when I went through here and I gutted the whole house, I tore off the drywall, and this was above the drywall. So the drywall was on, on this side of it. So this time I did the drywall, and then I put this on the opposite side so we can actually see it. Right, so it was hidden by the drywall before. Yeah. And then you took the drywall down, you took this down, cleaned it all up, which we have videos of that too. All this wood I took down from the ceiling, it's in the laundry room, reclaimed. So right now I am scrubbing it all down and then uh, I'm going to let it dry real good and hopefully it'll go right back in where I took it down from. I labeled everything so we'll see what happens. We reframed it and everything so I don't know if it'll be the exact same size as it was before but uh, I think we'll make it work one way or another. So now we gotta decide what to do for the paint color. I mean part of me kind of likes it the way it is but I, I think it'll be better white. Look at the vent! Yep! Cute! Yeah I think we need to do it white. So the only thing I have to do now is finish this last piece and then the light fixtures, the hole is the right size but the light itself um, has like some ridges on it so it's like about a quarter inch from touching the wood. So I gotta go through and I'm just gonna kind of cut away a little bit and then and then that'll be done. So, cool. Yeah. That looks so and I good. Like, I, I like these lights out here because they're flush with the ceiling and since the ceiling's like eight feet maybe a little bit less um if you're carrying stuff through here you don't want to bump into the lights right broomstick anything I don't it's want dangling to break down it. so these ones i like it because they're recessed exactly for that reason you don't want them hanging down yeah i don't want recessed in any other parts of the house except for maybe here closets maybe the bathroom we'll nice. see mm -hmm. good Pretty job coming together and it looked so great. It's amazing how you can take something old that would normally you would think in a renovation be ripped out and thrown out and restore it and reuse it and you're not having to go out and buy new materials and you can just use the materials you had. You just freshened it up a bit and now it's like we have a brand new ceiling or eventually we'll have some brand new old floors. There's just such character and I think just originality in that, in maintaining that original nature of the house instead of just putting in a bunch of modern materials. Now I know there is a need to do that at times because even our old siding that was just like so rotted and we could not restore it, we had found a lumber store nearby that sold the same type of Dutch lap siding that we originally had on the house so we had to go and purchase new siding for that and you know not the entire house obviously but there were certain parts that we had to do that so i can see that you know would have to be something you would consider if you could not restore it at all like there was no hope or ability to if the wood was so rotted and so far gone that you just had to like you really did have to toss it at that point so it's not like we have everything completely restored but as much as we can we have tried it is such a rewarding process when you do start to see things going up after they have been restored but then you do look back and go, wow, that was a lot of work. And I would say for us, it has been worth it. And you know, maybe not for everybody because time is money. But for us, this is like our, kind of like has become our creative art project at the same time. And maybe we are taking a lot longer. Actually, we are taking a lot longer than maybe anyone else 
probably would, unless they have a passion and a love to restore something old and you know have the patience to do so. And I don't think that everybody does necessarily, but it has been something that has really drawn our attention. And I mean, we would find ourselves on weekends just driving to local historical or heritage districts nearby to just get ideas and to see these older homes preserved. And it just like kind of gives us a warm fuzzy feeling like this is a bit of history that we get to be a part of and it's just it's really exciting it's become kind of this new unique thing that we've really been into lately if you want to read more about this journey and see additional photos and more information check out our blog journeydowntheroad.com you can also pick up a free small space living guide there Thanks so much for joining us on this journey. We're so glad that you are sharing this adventure with us. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.